Hi, I'm Jay Koenig, a member of the League of Women Voters. Along with the League and SFGov TV, I'm here to discuss Proposition C, a ballot measure that will be before the voters on November 6th. The city currently uses federal, state, and local funds to support affordable housing programs for both low-income and moderate-income households. Recent federal cutbacks and reductions in state funding have decreased the funding available for affordable housing programs. Proposition C would amend the charter to establish a housing trust fund. The city would contribute $20 million to the fund in 2013. Each year, the city contribution would increase by $2.8 million, up to $50.8 million in 2024. After 2024, the city would contribute an annual amount based on the $50.8 million but adjusted for changes in the city's general fund revenues. The city would use the fund to build, purchase, and improve affordable housing, provide $15 million for a loan program, for down payment assistance for moderate income home buyers and emergency first responders, and provide up to $15 million for a program that would help eligible households avoid foreclosure. Proposition C would change the affordable housing requirements for private residential developments in two ways. First, it would reduce the on-site affordable housing requirement to approximately 12% for most projects. Second, it would prohibit the city from increasing affordable housing requirements beyond those in place on January 1, 2013. Proposition C would authorize the development of up to 30,000 low-income rental units in the city. I'm here with Peter Cohen, Executive Director of the Council of Community Housing Organizations and a proponent of Proposition C. Also joining us is Star Child, local activist with the Libertarian Party of San Francisco and former candidate for public office. He's an opponent of the measure. Thank you both for taking the time to be with us today. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Jay. Peter, could you offer some opening comments about your support of the measure? Sure, and, and thank you, Jay, for having us and for the League of Women Voters for putting this on. This is a great service. I don't want to overcomplicate this. The Prop C Housing Trust Fund is really a very basic measure. It maintains and stabilizes the long-standing funding commitment that San Francisco has made to affordable housing. Just in the last two decades, the city has helped to produce upwards of 20,000 permanently affordable housing units, both rental and ownership, and it's served a wide variety of folks. And the reason now more than ever that this trust fund, this Prop C measure, is critical is the state of California recently dissolved all local redevelopment agencies across the state uh, for various reasons. But one of the unintended consequences is, it, is that it eliminated then one of the great funding sources for our affordable housing work locally. So what Prop C Trust Fund does is restore that funding source essentially to its same level and allows the city to continue, continue to provide that longstanding commitment. Thank you. Star Child, can you offer some comments for the opposition? Sure, and um, thank you again for having us. Certainly. The um, Proposition C would actually subsidize housing for people earning more than the median income uh, in San Francisco, among others, and it would reduce the amount of uh, uh, units in new developments which go to uh, uh, so-called affordable housing, which really isn't even that affordable. San Francisco desperately needs more affordable housing, but uh, this measure, uh, which essentially brings the San Francisco Redevelopment Agency back from the dead, uh, is not the way to do it. Uh, the Redevelopment Agency has a long uh, history, uh, some would say, of racism, uh, certainly of, uh, I think, cronyism with developers and lack of accountability. Uh, that was one of the reasons uh, the agencies were closed down by the Democrat-controlled legislature and governor last year, and uh, we believe that was the right decision. This shouldn't have come back as a permanent set-aside until 2042. Understood. The, uh, Peter, I know similar elements of what we're seeing in this proposition have come up almost four times. Uh, offered as a set-aside back in 1990 and then 2008. And then the bond 
measures were proposed in 2002 and 2004. Mm -hmm. Can you describe how this may be different in, in its effect, in how it's being brought forward to the voters? Sure. Well, as I said, the immediate context, the crisis, if you will, is that the city stands to significantly lose funding for its programs. I mean, we're talking about a program cut. Um, so that's quite different in some respects from previous attempts. But the similarity is that for many years we've been thinking about how to stabilize the funding that we need for affordable housing programs over the long term. Not everything it can be done immediately. Sometimes there needs to be long-term planning. There needs to be bonding. It's a complicated process of doing affordable housing work. Um, the way that's been done before, there was a bond that was previously uh, passed, is to get the voters to approve a bond. Uh, you essentially are borrowing money. You spend that down. You pay it back with interest, and you start over again. The idea of having a somewhat more stable or permanent source is the idea here with the Housing Trust Fund. The other difference between this measure and previous set-aside attempt is that it does not touch any general fund revenues that are existing now. It's all built on existing sources that have gone to affordable housing and new sources to the, to the general fund that are anticipated. So okay. that's a very important point for us coming into this. We have many members. I have a coalition, Council of Community Housing Organizations, the coalition of housing providers, developers, organizers, and many of them are in social services. And we, f we understand full well that you can't rob from Peter to pay Paul. And that was one of our fundamental, if you will, bright lines. This had to be based on revenue that would not touch existing sources for other programs. Understood. Thank you. How would the opposition respond to that, Star Child? Yes. Well, money is, of course, fungible. So any money that is put towards this program would, by definition, uh, not be available for other needs, everything from parks to health care to education. Um, this measure would uh, get San Francisco city government into the business of making home loans. Uh, this is part of what brought on the economic crisis at the federal level, uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac uh, giving out uh, home loans uh, to people who really couldn't afford uh, to buy and, and later had their houses foreclosed. Uh, Having, uh, you know, we don't know what's going to happen in the housing market for the next 30 years. Uh, I think it's foolish to set aside, uh, you know, increasing set amounts of money uh, for the next three decades uh, when we know right now that there's thousands of people living on the streets. Why not just build as many affordable units now as possible and, and do that by getting government out of the way with all its red tape and, and regulations and taxes and union work rules that increase the cost of housing, that would be a better way to get affordable housing, not bringing back this redevelopment agency with its legacy of driving African Americans out of the Fillmore. And they had slated over half of the Bayview Hunters Point area for redevelopment before the agency was shut down last year. Understood. Thank you. Any final thoughts, Peter, that you'd like to offer? Yeah, I mean, there's a number of assertions here from, from my uh, opponent that uh, I think are just based in a misunderstanding of how affordable housing works in San Francisco in this particular measure. Unfortunately, there's not enough time to tackle all of them, but I want to make it very clear, this is not subsidizing middle-income homeowners. This money is primarily going to go, 90% of it, for very low and low-income households in San Francisco. That has always been the programmatic focus of San Francisco because you can leverage funding. Mm -hmm. It is impossible for the market rate developers to build housing for the homeless or for very low income. We live in a high, high income real estate market and that is precisely why we have an affordable housing sector here in the city. Uh, when it comes to the idea of recreating redevelopment, that's a fallacy. This is not about recreating redevelopment. It's about recognizing that redevelopment allowed a certain portion of funding to be used for affordable housing. And that's all this is doing is maintaining the city's funding commitment. It's not about recreating redevelopment. In fact, that's a closed chapter in history. And lastly, the idea that we're somehow reducing uh, the uh, mixed income housing is, is also a sort of fallacy. There is a purpose to providing an incentive for developers to do what's called mixed income housing, providing some of their units that are actually affordable to moderate income households. Most developers do not do that, and there's an incentive here for them to do it. Really what we're doing with the Housing Trust Fund is providing a set of programs that are funded 
to provide from all the way from folks who are formerly homeless to folks who are in first time home ownership and everything in between to have their chance to be and stay in San Francisco. Thank you. Any final comments? Start well, it, it sounds to me like uh, Peter is, is saying that on one hand, well, no, it won't subsidize uh, middle income people. But then he's saying, well, there's a range everywhere from the people who really need the affordable housing the most up to, doesn't quite say what the, the top level is, but uh, uh, it is possible to build true affordable housing. There was a guy named Jim Reed who ran for mayor here a few years ago who was a building contractor by trade. And he built himself in his own uh, backyard and lived in for several months a single unit house that he built for twelve thousand dollars you know it was very small designed for one person uh, mm -hmm. some, getting somebody off the street is like 10 foot by 10 foot but it had plumbing electricity you know storage er everything someone would need to live you know a simple existence and um, twelve thousand dollars you know how much are these units gonna cost to build you know half a million dollars uh, they're not really affordable and these government programs are not really helping the people uh, who are most in need of housing, as we can see by the continued presence of homeless people on the streets of San Francisco. And this is bringing back redevelopment. The term redevelopment is in the text of the measure. It says it's a, a measure designed to capture revenue like uh, the redevelopment agency did. Okay. Thank you both very Thank much you. for Thank offering you, your thoughts and insights. We hope this discussion was informative. For more information on this and other ballot measures in this year's election, please visit the San Francisco League of Women Voters website at sfvotes.org. And remember, early voting is available at City Hall Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. If you don't vote early, be sure to vote on November 6th. Thank you. Mm -hmm.